Uh, the two of you, welcome to the show. Julia, I might quickly start with you and not a good session at all, down 1.6%. Once again, risk aversion, the play of the day. And the last three sessions on the Australian share market, we have seen the same theme uh, emerging, and that is selling off the growth sectors, the defensives uh, being better than uh, the rest of the market, and no change today. If we have a look at the last three days on the market, we've seen a total fall of 5.4%. And with risk aversion very much in play, the safe haven areas were the ones to benefit. We saw gold prices reaching a new record high in Asia, trading above 1900 920 US an ounce. So as you can imagine, the gold mine is doing well. The gold ETF was up by 2.8%. But elsewhere in the market, it was a very red day. If we have a look at the top 100 stocks, only eight of them managing gain today. All of the sectors trading lower. Once again, like yesterday, the worst performing sector was the energy sector, and it's being hit by fears about global growth. If we have a look at the defensives outperforming. So those typical defensive areas, healthcare, staples, the telecom, as well as utilities, all lower but outperforming the market. Property was a bit of a strange one. It was down by 1.8%. And the last three sessions, as well as the last quarter, we have seen property sector taking on defensive characteristics, but that relationship did seem to break down. And it was very interesting where we ended up the day as well, 4,075 points. It's a key level of support. If we have a look at the 30-day chart, you can see we bounced off that mark late in August, and it was also a resistance early area earlier on in August as well. So finishing right on the 4,075 point mark. And that means if we see a bounce off that level, that could be a bit of a reprieve for the market over the next few sessions. And on Singapore, on Asia, some interesting or some comments from Singapore's finance minister uh, watched in Asia. Is Singapore becoming a little bit of a bellwether? Is that why they're getting the interest and the focus from markets? If we have a look at Singapore, the last GDP numbers that we saw for the second quarter saw a contraction of 6.5%. And today we've seen some comments coming out of the finance minister in Singapore. Now, this is very closely watched because if you have a look at Singapore's economy, essentially it's a port, so it's very sensitive to global trade. And if we have a look at those comments coming through from Singapore's finance minister, he's saying that Asia is not immune to what is happening around the world. In fact, if we have a look, US, Europe has stalled. We heard some comments also coming out from China, Chinese officials saying that we could see growth in China stalling to the lowest level in 10 years. And we know that China is aiming for an average of 7% growth over the next five years. But of course, so these things in Europe and US are important for China. They're, they're China's two largest export markets. So China, a massive manufacturing economy, the two largest export markets, the U Europe as well as the US, looking at slowdowns. So I guess if we have a look around the globe, uh, I, what's worrying the market is two things. One, systemic risk stemming out of the European sovereign debt crisis, the banking system there. And two is the concurrent uh, slowing that we are seeing in the US, in Europe, in China. I think the world would be able to deal with just one of these countries slowing down in terms of growth. But the fact that we're probably going to see all three at, this, at the same time is a fear of the markets at the moment. And that statement with the RBA today? I think the statement was more hawkish than what the market was expected. So the immediate reaction was a rise in terms of the Aussie dollar. But after the initial rise that we've seen in the Aussie dollar, and this is the Aussie dollar today, you can see that once again, market conditions, and it's just been very volatile. We haven't seen a clear trend in terms of the Aussie dollar over the last few hours. It is going to be the macro themes which do influence the Aussie dollar. We're still seen as a risk currency, and I guess out of Europe, that's going to be very closely watched tonight, given that we did see the CAC falling 4.7%, the German DAX down by 5.3% overnight. And as you mentioned, uh, James, Deutsche Bank CEO comments, Joseph Ackerman, yesterday coming out at a conference in Frankfurt saying that it's an open secret that our numerous European banks wouldn't survive, uh, I guess, uh, the revalue the revaluing of debt that they hold on their books if they were to revalue them at uh, market levels. And that's really what the concern is at the moment. We are st still seeing the one-year Greek uh, yields at 63%, the two years over 50%, the market pricing in a 100% uh, chance of a default in terms of the Greek situation.